All right, welcome back into Locked On Vols and Locked On Chiefs. I'm Eric Kane, along with Rod Tracy, and uh, really glad to uh, to be here. And we're doing a little bit of a crossover here, talking about Trey Smith, of course, former Tennessee uh, all, freshman All American, All SEC guard, and the sixth round pick for the Kansas City Chiefs, and making the headways in uh, in Chiefs training camp. And and Ron, I, I appreciate. It. I've been wanting to catch up with you for the last few days now. You know, what's it look like on, on Chiefs front, just kind of getting to know the player that is Trey Smith? It's it's really interesting because he is one of now three rookies that looks to be starting on this particular offensive line. And he's the guy that we kind of all set apart a lot of buffer to let him learn, let him adjust. You know, when I did his film breakdowns pre-draft, I know that he's got some athleticism. He's certainly got his tenacity. But fitting into what we thought the offense was going to be was going to be a little bit challenging for him, right? Well, in the meantime, they've revamped. And I think what we're going to see not only in the preseason games, but definitely come the season, they're going to use more of the strengths that he's akin to in their game than maybe we've seen in years past. I think that's a big plus for him. He's going to be a linchpin in getting drive off of the ball, which has been something they haven't been able to do the last couple of years. Well, so far, when you've seen them in, in, in training camp uh, early on, I know that it took a while to get in the pads, but been in the pads for quite some time right now. I mean, as he obviously he stood out. I mean, I saw the depth chart released, and uh, he's slated right there at right guard. What has he done well uh, so far in training camp? He's really fixed the one thing that I was concerned with him coming out in that he's not on the ground as much. He's he looks like he keeps his balance better. He's trimmer. He's dropped probably from looking from film. We don't have this confirmed, but somewhere between twenty five pounds and maybe a touch more. You know, he's moving better in an offense that demands that you move better. Um, I think the zone blocking looks better when they run that. Clearly, I think he's a little bit more at home in the power gap type stuff. But overall, it's been a really pleasant surprise, especially when you consider he's going up against um, an unretired veteran in Kyle Long who ended up getting hurt. But there's one guy you had slotted in there. Then you have another returning veteran, Laurent Duvernay-Tardif, who's played a ton of snaps for this team. Yeah. Now, trade managed to stay in front of both of them. And that's significant. So I think uh, anybody who wants to follow him to the next level is going to be pleasantly surprised with how much you get to see him in year one. You know, coming into the draft, it, I mean, I, Trey was kind of all over the board. Some mocks had him in the third round. Some mocks had him in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, just because of the medical concerns. How much did you know about Trey Smith? You said you did your research prior to the draft. And did you think that the Chiefs could realistically select a guy like Trey Smith? I was comfortable with it. I come from a strength conditioning physiological background. So knowing that the team physicians at Tennessee had worked that out and he was able to play controlling blood clots is, is a blood chemistry issue. If you can get that narrowed down medically, you generally are going to be okay. Unless you are doing some kind of like creatinine supplementation, or you let yourself get too dehydrated things that are clinically really significant. They, they, there's a lot of education around both at Tennessee and now in Kansas city. Um, for me, I wasn't too worried about it. I was more worried about fitting into the zone base offense and being able to handle stunts in particular that go to his outside. So I had him at the top of day three as a high fourth rounder on my board. So what's been the reaction from the fan base in, in Chiefs Kingdom, kind of knowing Trey Smith's story, knowing everything that he's had to overcome, getting back onto the field, and then, again, adversity strikes once again with the NFL draft. And it just feels like, and of course this is coming from a ball's perspective, but it feels like one of the best stories in, in all of NFL training camp. It's love at first sight. It really is. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, Kansas City is a Midwest town that is a sucker for a good story. You know, even to the point where sometimes we get a little ahead of ourselves in promoting guys that maybe don't have it physically at this level. But when you put it all together with his style of play, which is something that's been so lacking in Kansas City uh, for the last several years, that's just, you know, a wish fulfilled for the fan base. And it's been very, very quick to happen. I want to know from you, like, are you surprised at the transition that he's been able to make and the changes that he seems to be putting in place? Not one bit. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that you know we've we've covered him. I remember when he was a when he was a high school recruit? I mean, he was you know as high as number one in the nation in some in some publications. Coming to Tennessee, starting as a true freshman, you know, going through a coaching change, then coming in with a new regime, hitting the sidelines because of the blood clots, missing some times, battling back, taking some time off again, um, playing left tackle, playing right guard, playing you know left guard, uh, pretty much playing everything but center, seeing just everything he's overcome and doing it at the, at the high level with. With just a great, just attack the day type attitude, and and knowing that really it's a blessing every single day 
that he's able to go out there and play football. It's just a guy from me, from my vantage point, that just loves the game and is just so appreciative for everything. So was he disappointed? Absolutely. Is he considering it's a blessing to fall in a great place like Kansas City? I think so, too. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And, and the marriage of the two sides of the personality, I think, is what really has – a lot of the fan base fired up. It has me fired up too to be that physically dominant and a guy that looks for content that looks to finish that much, but still has the cerebral part that can understand what is maybe the most complex offense in the NFL as a rookie is always a challenge, particularly when you're in an offensive line where you're not the only rookie. And the guy who's making the calls next to you is somebody that you've seen play quite a bit and you're kind of working together. And I think that that cerebral part of it is probably the thing that gives him the biggest edge here um, in terms of like offensive flavors, has he ever had any problem with any kind of transition to a, a style of play that he's been asked to perform? You know, not not really. Um, it, does he have his strengths? Absolutely, he has his strengths. I mean, he, he he's been asked to play tackle and get out in space and and do that type of stuff, and and he can do it. And he did it at a high level. Plus, I mean, obviously, I mean the SEC is no joke, but of course, it's still not the National Football League. So he was able to do it at a high level. But getting him back into the interior, you know. Going going through that play side gap, taking that step, getting up to the backers and stuff like that. That's kind of his wheelhouse. He's he's a nasty guy. Um, you know, you know, allowing him to pull and to get out there and kick out some guys in man on the line of scrimmage, allowing him to trap backside, take over a you know waylay a one technique that doesn't see it's coming, um, and, and really fighting to the whistle and sometimes after the whistle. But you know, in terms of just a, an offensive lineman and what you want, and just and something you mentioned too, just just the smarts and the ability to adapt and take coaching and, and take it in stride and go. Um, I think when he was at the senior bowl down in Mobile, uh, you know, we thought that that really helped them in terms of his stock. And of course the reason he, sl- he slid was because of the medical concerns, but mm-hmm. I mean, you had so many, you know, reviews coming out from coaches and front office personnel and, and former players who were saying, man, you know, Trey Smith is, is, you know, beyond years in terms of just not only is he physically dominating and physically impressive, but, taking the coaching what we're doing and putting it into action right away and so that's just kind of Trey Smith again he's he didn't have the best coaching here at Tennessee I don't think that's any secret especially on the offensive line with Will Friend um, I, I think that he's been held back a little bit in that regard but obviously Trey was a guy that, that can overcome it at that level well I think not to throw any coaching staff under the bus but I, I think that can be probably most summed up by his teammate now the former SEC opponent and Nick Bolton who played at Mizzou who got to face him quite a bit. And he's talked about the evolution that he's seen just in this training camp of being more physical, being able to to do his task, not just in a way that is beating somebody up, but is exactly in line with what the offense demands. And I think really for me, maybe maybe I'm wrong. You tell me, I think the guy that might reap the best benefits from Trey being a starter is not Patrick Mahomes, but Clyde Edwards Alaire. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. Again, it's just, it's weird how things work. You spend, I mean, those two played against each other, you know, I guess back in 20, uh, you know, a couple 19. years ago, rather. Yeah. Uh, so somewhere around there. And, and again, you mentioned, you know, bowling and everything, and, and it's just kind of the sec and the fraternity that it is, but, you know, having a guy in front of you that can do all that. And, uh, you know, really for the Kansas city chiefs, when you spend, you know, a high draft pick on, on a position player, a skill player, especially like a running back, you want to protect that investment. Um, because running backs nowadays are kind of a, a dime a dozen and you don't see a lot of guys get selected that high and, Certainly, when you want them, you gotta you gotta protect that. And so, just I, I look at it like this. I mean, Kansas City could they have selected Trey or really any other NFL team? Could, could they have selected Trey Smith well early in the draft? Absolutely. But the fact that he came down to the sixth round, you went ahead and signed him and gave him some guaranteed money that is going to help him out a lot. A lot. You're just getting so much more bang for that buck. And it really, as you point out, it's just gonna it's gonna benefit everybody around him. Uh, I think everybody down in Tennessee should be happy, folks. We're glad that you're here for this. Eric Kane, Locked On Vols. Ryan Tracy, Locked On Chiefs. Thanks for doing this. This was great. Yeah, absolutely, man. Have fun. Have a good one, folks.